Okay, my name is Ralph Schander. By a coincidence, I got to RCA in 1959. Uh, I previously worked in northern New York, and uh, from there I transferred to Moorestown, New Jersey. Okay. Um, can you talk about the first project that you worked on at RCA? I was hired as a hydraulics engineer because that's what I did there in Watertown, New York. When I came here, there was a problem with a radar structure built out of truss work. What was required to know was the natural frequency of it. The, uh, my expertise there in hydraulics is the only thing I've never done at RCA. Everything else there came along and uh, I had to dig into all of the problems there that were thrown at me. The reason was that I was becoming an analyst. In other words, uh, if you have a structure out there that's worth a megabuck or, or more, you would like to know before you build it there if it's going to meet spec. Therefore, they had to find some guy who was able there to predict what the damn thing is going to do. If it will meet spec or if it needs improvement before you spend all the money in creating it. And uh, that is the thing there that uh, I did when I got to RCA to the special group that did R&D. It was uh, the group there that uh, then produced all of the analysis, be they thermal for satellites or be they structural for radars. And uh, into my lab was stumped there the care of the structures. Okay. Um, and from that point, your career progressed, and where did it go from there? Well, the uh, first project there that I solved was the natural frequency of a uh, truss work uh, structure, radar structure. Uh, what I used is some of the experience I had from my teaching days, which was the Williot diagram that uh, is a means of calculating the deflections of a, a truss work. Now, since nobody was there who could do it, and I fortunately had remembered there that I had taught this damn thing, so I got to do it. For uh, uh, a thank you, I guess, they made me a double A. And uh, ever since there, I kept this, despite the many layoffs that there were, nobody could displace me. So did you feel like RCA recognized your work, appreciated your work. Um, how do you think RCA uh, received that? Well, obviously when somebody comes from Austria there and uh, uh, brags about his, his uh, degrees and things like that, you don't trust them. So <laughs> what you have to do is you have to watch them and you have to feed them their projects uh, if he solves them, good. Then he gets patted on the back and he gets an extra medal. And that is what happened. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I was lucky enough there to keep out of trouble and I never was caught with anything doing wrong. Well, you didn't just keep out of trouble, you received a Sarnoff Award. Yeah, I received a Sarnoff Award for a special deed. Right? Uh, it was a project there that the RCA did in San Francisco. It was a thousand foot tower upon which there uh, several uh, radar uh, radio stations there were uh, installed and uh, it was quite an, an elaborate affair. One thing that was important to know was what happens to the structure if there's an earthquake. So the demand for an earthquake analysis there came up and uh, had to be responded to. Well, Rav Shander did it. I uh, uh, was able there to calculate the uh, e efficiency of the structure during a 7.5 Richter earthquake and uh, satisfy the customer there that they could build it there and it wouldn't fall down or blow over if uh, there was an earthquake. Um, for which I got the Sarnoff Award. So what was the workplace like? Well, the workplace was uh, a special group there that did uh, special work. Additionally, we also had the summer students. So we had to uh, uh, introduce them there to the goodies and the baddies there of their future profession. And uh, especially we had a number of girls or women, women engineers there to take care of. Some of them uh, stuck with RCA and became leaders and managers. And Others there were male and there they branched out into uh, whatever they were used. Mm -hmm. uh, what about your supervisors? How did your supervisors treat you? Uh, my first supervisor was, was uh, what was his name? Ah, my Poor brain. I know I, I wrote it down so that I could report it. Uh, Magnus. Herb Magnus. He was an excellent supervisor, and he's the one who gave me my double A status. <laughs> so I'm thankful for that. Uh, my next supervisor, when Magnus was advanced to some other job was Dr. Fred Weiss. Uh, Dr. Weiss had a degree there from Vienna, just like I did, only he was after me, a few years after me. And of course, uh, we spoke the same lingo. We could speak in German if it had to be, and we could speak in... in uh, English because that was the common language that was spoken in the group and uh, we didn't speak French. And your co-workers? Well, there were co-workers, but if I recall there, Fred Weiss did most of the thermal work and I did most of the structure work and I don't know what the others did. Uh, they were helpful in, in areas there that didn't require their any specific skills. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just the time before finite elements came up. So that was a time where 
your experience uh, with structures there, the old-fashioned way, was important. Not many of them had that. Later on, when finite elements became available, uh, that was the specialty of the guy who who did the final finite element uh, uh, analysis. And that, again, there was one guy alone, right? Mm -hmm. If you read there the papers there that, that paraphrases, there you'll find out. Okay. Did you spend any time with your co-workers outside of work after Sure, hours? I played volleyball. <laughs> well, we played volleyball, and of course that was after hours, and uh, it was relaxing, and uh, it was good for your health. Mm -hmm. Did you end up with any lasting friendships from any of your co-workers or from anybody at RCA? Well, I was on very good terms with my boss, with Dr. Weiss, and his wife, Dr. Weiss, she was the English teacher in Moorestown, and my wife there got along with her because we spoke the same language. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, as far as where you lived um, and what you observed in the development of South Jersey, do you feel that there was any RCA influence in the development of South Jersey? Well, when RCA decided to put up a, a factory or a, a, a place there where they were going to produce high-class radar work, uh, they uh, chose a spot in Moorestown that had been a piece of, of uh, a farm. Uh, and uh, everybody there was happy that they had uh, an outfit there, plus they had a place there where a lot of jobs were available. Mm -hmm. And uh, the feeling of the Moorestonians for RCA was certainly positive. Especially there when they had the yearly uh, uh, shinding there where they invited uh, people there to ha come and have a look and see. It was very popular. And uh, we all liked that. What was the downside of working for RCA? Was there any, any, anything bad in, in your experience in working for them? Yeah, sure there. I couldn't, couldn't do any skiing anymore. <laughs> well, whereas in Watertown there, I was able to do some skiing in winter and in summer there, I had the, all of the water I wanted in the St. Lawrence River. And in in, in uh, Moorestown, there was Sunnybrook Ski Club. That wasn't bad. They'll just get used to it. Okay. Um. And uh, one good thing about uh, Moorestown was the schools were excellent. Okay. So our offspring all got a, a first-class education for which you can only be thankful. Um, okay, well, we're almost uh, finished with, uh, with the interview. How would you sum up your career and your experience at RCA? Well, when I look back at my career, I had two years of locomotive steam engine uh, analysis and, and testing and uh, uh, railroading. One of the highlights of my life was that they let me 
get the control of a steam locomotive with the whole uh, train load in back there and the, and the whistle blowing. Eh? So they let me do this for 15 minutes and they kicked me off and I had to <laughs> then just stand there in the cabin there and watch the, the real uh, locomotive uh, conductor there do the job. My next job there was when I was a POW, six weeks for the Americans and three years there for the French. And then I had six years of teaching in the, at an engineering school. Uh, luckily there, my boss, Dr. Schloss, had worked with with, uh, what's his name, Van Braun, at the, the uh, place there where the Germans built their rocketry. He picked up a lot of uh, tricks there of the trade during his career there. And when he came and got promoted and dumped his uh, hours on me, I got his notes. And I learned a couple of tricks which uh, came in handy there when I was working at at uh, uh, Watertown and, and Moorestown. The next job there in, in uh, Watertown, New York, of course, was different from the one in Vienna, where I had been a professor with tenure. My mom was an American, and she didn't want to come back to Vienna because Vienna was surrounded by the Russians. So she hated them, and she said, well, then you come to the United States and try it. All right, so I took a leave of absence for one year, at, from my teaching position and uh, found a job there in Watertown, New York for uh, aircraft pumps, funny enough. And uh, I liked it. And in five years, I created something that was called the Pump Bible, according to which you should be able there to analyze the efficiency of any pump that came along. However, that's something there I was hired for at RCA and never did. When I got to RCA, I was indulged in structural analysis, which actually wasn't a thing that I really had studied for. I studied for mechanical engineering and not for structural engineering. However, it tickled my fancy there, and uh, of course, uh, I couldn't be pushed down there. I had to do it. So I had to do it. And I was successful with it, and all of my years in, at RCA, which were uh, 28 plus four years of consulting afterwards, they were successful and never caught me on a lie. Mm -hmm. Although, <laughs> although they tried. 